And now we turn to BPPV of the anterior canal. This is much less common and not well characterized. However, one must always beware of central involvement. It should be suspected though when the Dix Hall Pike maneuver provokes a downbeat nystagmus. And so we move on to the diagnostic maneuver for anterior canal BPPV. The head is turned through 45 degrees and dropped backwards just like this. The patient experiences a little spinning. There is some downbeating nystagmus. There is always reason to hesitate with downbeating nystagmus on Dix Hall Pike testing. It is not at all typical for posterior canal BPPV. At this point, we can bring the patient back up again. In this particular instance, we suspect a right anterior canal BPPV, as is evidenced by the model to the side. However, this isn't entirely clear and we still are at a learning stage with understanding this canal. We've asked the patient just to displace himself a little more to the right. This is to allow us to do an even more effective diagnostic maneuver. We take him down quickly so that the head is actually hanging over and beyond the edge of the couch. In this situation, we've now seen a more striking downbeating nystagmus. We thus have a strong case for this patient's vertigo originating from the anterior canal. For the treatment of this type of anterior canal BVPV, Different authors have proposed different maneuvers, some the Cement, some reverse Cement, and some even an Epley maneuver. However, there is no real proof that these are effective and there is no recognized treatment as such. We hope that a better understanding of the physiological mechanisms of BPPV will bring about even more effective therapeutic maneuvers, particularly for lateral canal cupulolithiasis and anterior canal BPPV.